everybody. We're here again for our Wild Animals Around the World series for every Wednesday. We've already, and actually we've got a little animal that wants to visit us today. <laughs> she's decided she wants some snuggle time. This is Polly. She's actually, she's a pug and a chihuahua mix. <laughs> and she likes, she likes learning with us and more than anything, she likes snuggling. So I think she's just going to end up sitting on my lap the whole time. <laughs> So here is our world map here. Oh no, my bookmark fell. So far, we've gone to Australia and seen all the amazing creatures there. So many marsupials that are there. And then last week, we actually went to Asia and we learned so many different um, habitats that the different creatures live in in Asia. Well, today we're gonna venture all the way as south as you can go in our world to Antarctica. Antarctica is the coldest place on the earth. And in fact, the South Pole is the exact coldest place in the entire world. But something that I thought was kind of interesting was that even though Antarctica is the coldest place on the earth, the Arctic Ocean up here in the north is actually the coldest ocean. So the Southern Ocean, what happens is the um, warmer waters will actually kind of go, um, they flow down and that's actually what creates the algae that all the krill um, like to eat that's down in the Southern Ocean. So I found that kind of interesting that the coldest place is not the coldest ocean down there. And I'm curious as to those who are watching, if they can have a guess, what kind of mammals do you think live in Antarctica? I'd love to hear some, um, some uh, guesses that you may have. And as you can see, Alexis and I, we are all bundled up and it's not because our house is so cold, it's because we're venturing to Antarctica. So we wanted to get the real feel of it all and be all bundled up too. <laughs> so we're actually gonna be using the My Animal Notebook with the Becca. Let's just review what mammals are. So Alexis, could you read to us the mammal characteristics right here? We've got five main mammal characteristics. Can you read the rest of them right here? Number one. They milk for their babies and take good care of their young. No mammal has more than four limbs. They at least have some hair or fur. All mammals have lungs and breathe air. All mammals are warm-blooded. <laughs> so those are our five main characteristics of mammals. I see Mackenzie has a guest polar bears. That is a great guess, Mackenzie, but you know what? Polar bears do not live in Antarctica. They actually live way up north in the Arctic regions. I know, that's what a lot of people think. They think that polar bears live um, down in Antarctica, but actually there are no polar bears down in Antarctica. But that was a very good guess because they do live in a cold, snowy climate. So there's your mammal characteristics. And then also on the, in the back here, we actually have one of the creatures we're gonna talk about today. So if you look back on page, Number, it looks like it's one, looks like it's right next to 105. So you have page 105 here, and then it's on this side, you're gonna see a little picture of the humpback whale in the back of your book there. So the humpback whale is the largest mammal found in all the oceans of the world. They can weigh 40 tons. They can be dark gray or black with light colored markings on their stomachs. These distinct markings allow scientists to identify whales they are observing, and they communicate each other with songs. Now, I was actually trying to find a whale song to play, but most of them have um, music to the background. So Mackenzie has another guess, the white foxes. That's another great guess, because they do live in a, slow, a snowy climate, but they also live up in the Arctic region, way up north. So I'm wondering, does anybody have any other guesses about what mammals would live in Antarctica? I know it's a tricky one, isn't it? And while we're waiting for some more guesses, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you where to turn in your book. So I'm gonna talk about, we're actually gonna do a little homework project here. So on page number five in your animal notebook, whales, very good. There are actually, I gotta look to see how many. <clears throat> I think there were eight. I think there's eight different kinds of whales actually that live um, in Ant by Antarctica. What, honey? The whales. I know I was going to get the whale sound on our iPad, but then the battery's dead. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it because the battery's dead. Because I was just about to get that on and the battery died. But that's a fun thing to um, look up is the whale sounds and everything. So and we actually um, 
we're going to focus on the blue whale because the blue whale is actually the largest mammal in the whole world, not just in the ocean, but in the whole world. And they say actually the blue whale was most likely larger than all the um, dinosaurs too that lived. Just want to make sure we get everything. So while we're, um, we'd like to hear a little bit about those who are watching too. I know I saw Mackenzie's back and we're glad that Mackenzie's been able to join us every week. I'd like to hear your name, your age, and your favorite mammal. Like what, it doesn't matter where they're from. They don't have to be living in Antarctica, but what is your favorite mammal? So you can see Polly's getting cold. So she tries to, she tries to snuggle in. <laughs> she thinks it's cold like Antarctica too. <laughs> Oh, and I see. J.A. Great. I see. They've got a penguin. You're right. There are lots of penguins in Antarctica. And we'll talk more about those when we have, when we discuss, when we go through the birds. <laughs> oh, koala. Mackenzie's favorite is the koala. That's fun. I know they are really, really cute. I like the seals. Yeah. Now, well, what is your favorite mammal of all? Why don't you tell, introduce yourself to your name, your age, and your favorite mammal? My name is Alexis. I'm eight years old. And my favorite mammal is the seal. Oh, the seal? See, I would have guessed panda. She kind of went through a panda phase. And she does like koalas, too. I don't really have a favorite, but that's my most favorite. Yeah, that's kind of what you're thinking right now. Yeah, probably because we did a lot of seal talking, too. You've been learning a lot about seals. The Bengal seals. Lots of, the Yep, yeah, those are cute. So if you look at your book here, in page number five in your animal notebook, you're going to see it says, My Mammal Report. Now, this does not have to be on your favorite mammal. You could actually choose any mammal. It could just be an, a mammal that you're curious about. Maybe there's a certain mammal that you've heard about, but would you like to know more about? So your homework for next week, when we meet again on Wednesday, is I want you to be able to tell me the mammal that you've chosen for your report, and I want to know where it lives. And that could be maybe just one particular um, country, like for instance, the panda that only lives in China, or it could be something like the blue whale that actually lives in all, all the oceans but the Arctic Ocean. So I want you to have your mammal, and I'll put this in another post too, your favorite, or not your favorite, the mammal you want your report on, and where it lives. So that's what you're gonna do for this page number five. So today we're actually going to use page seven. We're skipping that page. You're gonna to go to page number seven on your page here where it says mammals. Page number seven, on this side, you're going to write Antarctic. So in the past we were writing mammals of Antarctica, but since this page is laid out a little different, I think we're just gonna write Antarctic and then mammals. You're gonna write Antarctic. Oh, let's see, we've got three kiddos there. Let's see if I could see, we have, let's see. We have logger, it looks like it's a dinosaur, little rancher, and sugar cube. It looks like they all like dinosaurs, five, eight, and 13. At least I think that's a dinosaur. It's really little on our screen. I think it's a dinosaur though. Yeah, dinosaurs are very fun. In fact, Alexis, when she was um, a little to uh, toddler. She loved dinosaurs and she would sit there and listen to these dinosaur facts. Like this book that was meant for older kids. It was so cute. And she called them didos. <laughs> it was fun. So you're going to write Antarctic. A-N-A-R-C-T-I-C. -C. The name Antarctic actually means opposite of Arctic. So that's why you can see the word Arctic in there. Ant Arctic. And if you don't have the My Animal Notebook, you can actually just use a plain notebook. These I just, I got, you can buy these at any craft store or Amazon. And you can just use a plain notebook and write Antarctic mammals on it. So we're gonna do um, a quick little book here. And then Alexis is gonna share some blue whale facts with some pictures of it. Oh, bless you. So this book, What Lives in Antarctica? So we talked about the whales, so Mackenzie guessed the whales. So let's see what other mammals live in Antarctica. So there's a sweet, somebody said penguins too. You're right on the penguins. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. It is the coldest, driest, and the windiest place on earth. 97% of Antarctica is covered by snow and ice. Antarctica is located at the 
bottom of the earth. It's surrounded by the Southern Ocean. The South Pole is in, right in the middle of Antarctica. It's, Antarctica is covered by a thick layer of ice. 90% of all the ice on earth is actually located in Antarctica. Most Antarctic animals live near the coast or in the Southern Ocean. So there aren't too many that venture too far into that coldest part. There are some though. Here we have the Antarctic fur seal. And I recently learned that fur seal is kind of in the category of a sea lion because they have a really thick layer. They don't have the layer of blubber that, um, that seals do. They have a really, really thick fur and that's why they're called the seal fur. Oh good, Mackenzie spelled it right. Good, I'm glad you spelled it right even though I spelled it wrong. That's what happens when you don't double check your work. I'm always telling Alexis, double check your work because it's so easy to make a mistake on something. Here's the Antarctic fur seal. There, I know you gotta go over there to see it, don't you, Alexis? So the fur seals have an outer coat of really rough fur, but then they have an undercoat that's super soft fur and it's waterproof. The fur seals eat krill, fish, and squid. They dive at night to feed. Fur seals have four flippers. They use their flippers to walk around on land. And this, the other thing about the fur seals and the sea lions is they actually have like little... Um, little muskrat ears. Yeah, they're kind of like little, yeah, there you go, like little muskrat ears, whereas seals just kind of have like a hole for their ears. So that's another difference between sea lions and seals in which a fur seal is a sea lion is that they, the sea lions and the fur seals have these cute little ears. And another difference was, oh, and they're, the way they go on land, that's right, the seals will actually kind of wiggle on their bellies on <laughs> land. It's <laughs> Where, really funny to watch. Yep. Whereas the sea lions, they actually kind of walk on land with their flippers like this and they'll bark. Arr, 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 arr. So those the are two of the big seals. difference. Mm -hmm. Barking sea lions. Seals, they don't tend to bark and they kind of wiggle and they don't have those ear flaps. So those are two big differences. And that's what you'll see as you mow the, the, the mammal that you'll see the most in Antarctica are seals. Here we have the Southern elephant seal. Isn't he huge? <laughs> he just kind of makes you laugh when he's you look at his cute face. He's just a big lug of blubber. Isn't he cute? Yeah, he's got, you could see all that blubber. I feel like you could like jump on him like a trampoline. He's got so much blubber. <laughs> he's a big lug of blubber. <laughs> he is. The Southern elephant seals, they're the largest seals actually in the world and also in Antarctica. The male seals can be 20 feet long and weigh 8,000 pounds. <laughs> that is crazy. They can that dive over 5,000 feet deep and stay underwater for two hours. The males have the large curved nose like the elephant's trunk and their nose helps them roar loudly. So you can see this one's probably a female. Um, her nose is not quite as big. And then here we have the male, I don't know if you can quite see that, but the male snout there is quite a bit more like an <laughs> elephant trunk. Oh, and Emma Kenzie said hers is glitching again. Yeah, I don't know, ours looks like it's okay. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the internet yeah, connection's the off. Who knows, right? I know sometimes one time my mom tried to call <laughs> and that caused probably a little glitch. Here's one that I think a lot of people like this creature. What is this one? The orca. Yep, the, the killer whale or the orca. They're the largest member of the dolphin family. Orcas can swim up to 30 miles per hour cool. and catch their prey. Orcas hunt fish, sea turtles, sharks, squid, penguins, and seals. They're social animals. They live and hunt in hunting groups called pods. Oh now, orcas God. are one, they're not just found in Antarctica. They're, they're found in Where the, else are they found? Do you remember, like Alexis? South, not South America. Um, What's the other cold North place? North Pole. That's right. So up in the Arctic Ocean, you'll the see pole. them and also down, but they're actually found kind of all over. So obviously a sea turtle is not going to be living in a cold like the Southern Ocean. Like they live in Florida and by the coral reef. Right. So, the, but the orcas kind of, they do live in all sorts of oceans, but they are also in Antarctica. And here's the humpback whale as well. The humpback, the humpback whale, whale often leaps up out of the water and then lands on their back. You may have seen a video of that before. It's really like, it's, I bet it's really fun. Mm -hmm. I like to do that in the water sometimes. This is called breaching. Humpbacks can make many different sounds and they sometimes sing for hours at a time. You can see his tail. The humpback's tail fin can be up to 18 feet wide. <laughs> Isn't that huge? And every humpback actually has different markings on its tail. So another way that God created them unique. 
Let's see, why are they called killer whales? Do they actually kill people and animals? I that's don't a, think they kill people. That's a good, good people. question. And in fact, in one of my books, it, it mentioned how even though they're called a killer whale, they've ne there's never been known that a killer whale has killed a human, but they do eat seals. So they do kill their and prey. And penguins. Yep. So yes, they, they do kill animals. So that's probably why they're called a killer whale. And it could be because uh, most of the whales, um, even though they're large, they'll eat krill and they eat small things and they're pretty, what's called a, a docile creature. Whereas the killer whale is a little more aggressive with its hunt and its kill. So that's probably why they call it killer whale, but they've actually, they've actually never known a killer whale to actually kill a human. Like All right, sharks. Alexis, you are up, come here, sweetie. <laughs> So we did some um, research on the blue whale. And the reason why the blue whale is so cool is it's the largest mammal in the world, like to ever be known, even bigger than the dinosaurs. So that's why it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go through some pictures and I asked Alexis some questions here and she's gonna answer for you. But what we're gonna do is that's gonna be our first note. And today, this page does not have lines for you. Good. So you're just gonna write blue whale, and I wish that were the right way where I could show it to you, blue. but I, we can at least spell it for you. So, so it's B -L So you write it. So it's- you know, Spell it for us, so spell it for us. B L U E, and then whale is W, H A L E. Good. And then um, what we're going to do is we're just going to write one fact. So this is kind of like a, a beginner's course on note taking. So you actually don't even have to write a whole sentence. So you don't have to write the blue whale is the largest mammal in the world. You can just write blue whale and you can write a dash, which a dash, I know mine's backwards, but I can at least show you what the dash looks like. So a dash is just, so I like to do a bullet point, blue whale, and then a little dash. And then you can sh um, write down your facts. So you can write that it's the largest mammal. You can write more, it's kind of depending on your level. You could just write blue whale. If maybe you're younger and you know writing a fact would be too much, just write blue whale. That's one of the mammals of, 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 the, uh, of the Antarctic mammals. So you can do it whatever your level is. But if you're able to, you can write even more than one fact. So you can write blue whale. So while you write, write your dash so you can get ready for your fact. So the blue whale is the largest mammal in the world. So that'd be a good fact to jot down. Largest mammal in the world. And you can also, the universe, make backward. I know, make backwards folks. I know that's why I was trying to figure out how we could put like, a little, um, to put two videos together so that we could do one showing the book and one showing us. And I, I don't know, I'm just not very good with technology. I wasn't able to figure it out. So we have our whales here. We have the world's biggest mammal. So Alexis is gonna share with us these facts here that we've learned about the blue whale. So I'll kind of show pictures and Alexis can kind of tell us. So Alexis, do you remember how big, can you tell us how big the, um, whales are? A whale can be the size of two school buses and it can be the size of... More than two school buses. Like... A whole 747 airplane. Yeah. That's one of the really, really big airplanes you'll see at the airport. So they are huge. And in fact, their tongue weighs as much as what? An elephant. And it's probably elephant. as big as an elephant too. Well, yeah, just, just the tongue is as much as... And we learned their heart. How big is their heart? Their heart is the size of a motorcycle. Mm-hmm, size of a motorcycle. So blue whales, while they do live um, near Antarctica and in the Southern Ocean, look, all the light blue on the map is actually where they live. So they live all over the different oceans. But if you notice, look, they don't live in the Arctic Ocean. It's because, kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's at the, the Arctic is actually a colder ocean and there's not as much food there because it's so cold. They should do it because everything is online now. Yes, you're right. Everything is online because of COVID. So that would be a very, that might be the new thing of 2021. I don't know, right? 2021, backwards books. That might be a real a real thing. So um, um, the whales do migrate. So Alexis, can you share what migrating is? Migrating is basically where they go to a warmer place to sleep. 
Yep, or yeah, or basically when the weather gets cold in one spot, right, they'll go to a warmer for place. For a whole year. For like for usually half the year. Usually they'll kind of split it up. So they'll go to the warm place to feed, and then they'll, I'm sorry, they'll go where they have their food to feed. So in the instance with, um, with the uh, blue whales, they actually feed by the Southern Ocean because there's so much krill there. And then they actually go in north here. Oh, is it glitching again? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure why it's glitching. And then they'll head, they'll head to this north area here to um, have their babies. So they um, do migrate. Can you tell everybody about the baleen? Well, let's just tell everybody about the baleen and what that's used oh, for. Oh, yeah. So the baleen is kind of like um, the, what you might call it, the stick things on a brush. Mm -hmm. Or like on a broom even, like a broom or a brush. The bristles. Yeah, the bristles. And it's called baleen it's like it's kind of like teeth but it's called baleen and they like they take water when they bite at the shrimp so they suck out the water the water goes out and the shrimp goes in mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? and actually here's a real photo of the baleen and you can really see there it looks like a bunch of hair or it does it looks really like bristles like bristles on a brush or something like that it's pretty cool and what is the diet of the blue whale what do they eat shrimp shrimp well cr yep, or krill it's a shrimp like krill, creature. krill krill oh yeah they just eat and remember how much they eat read that how much do they eat an adult blue whale can eat as much as 40 million krill in one day that is a lot of krill can you imagine 40 million krill that's crazy. Like that's not even 40,000 krill. All right. Now, here's another interesting thing about the whales, the blowholes. Because as you know, mammals breathe air. They don't have gills. So the whale um, breathes air. So Alexis, can you tell us a little bit about the blowhole right here? A blue whale breathes through two nostrils on the top of its head called blowholes. It can take deep, it takes deep breaths before it dives underwater. The whale, when the whale comes back up, it shoots the old air out of its blowholes. Yeah. A blue whale. Look at that. Do we'll also see if you remember that fact. How far up can they shoot their air? A blue the whale hole. can shoot up to 30 feet mm -hmm. high. Can you imagine that? 30 feet high up in the air. That would be really cool to see. What is a baby whale it called, feels. Alexis? Here's a picture of a baby a whale. A calf. It is, it's called a cala. So when you put more than one whale together, it's called a pod. Generally, they'll only be in two. It'll be a mama and her baby, or it'll be two adult whales that hang out together. They can actually live for 80 years, which is pretty long, I'd say, for- For um, animal work. For animals, for sure. And the other thing, tell us about this, Alexis. Blue whales are the loudest animal on earth. Yep, so you can see them there. So they are the loudest mammals on earth. So not only are they the largest, they're the loudest. So Alexis did find her um, whale sounds to share with everybody. So this is actually a mommy and her baby together. I don't know, can you hear it? Alexis, what is the one fact that really stood out to you? about the blue whale that you can write They're down. They're the heaviest, biggest, loudest animal on the earth. Yeah, they are. They're the biggest mammal. They're the loudest mammal on the whole earth, right? So make sure you write that back. Go ahead and write that back down. And now we're going to talk a little bit about seals. Seals are um, one of the the most prevalent mammals that are that live in Antarctica. So there are several seals that live in Antarctica um, that we're going to talk about in this book. So what we'll do is as we get to the seal, we'll pause and we'll write their, um, or we might do that. Maybe so we'll do that hot. at the end. Yeah, you could take your coat off since we're really not in Antarctica. <laughs> so I'm gonna show, I can actually show the pictures like this and read. So this one actually, this book actually works out a little bit better. So seals are mammals that spend most of their time swimming and diving in the ocean. There are two types of seals the eared seals and the earless seals. And that's what we were talking about earlier about the fur. So the those eared seals are the fur seals or the sea lions. And the earless seals are what they call the true seal. True 
Ooh, seals. <laughs> there are 19 kinds of seals living in the oceans around the world, um, but there are eight main ones that live in Antarctica, which are the crab eater, the Ross, the Weddell, and leopard seal are actually the main seals. And then there's a few other, um, like Antarctic fur seal and things like that. So seals actually breathe through their nostrils because they are mammals. They don't have gills when they breathe underwater. They have long, smooth bodies that help make them very good swimmers, and they come in a lot of sizes. Instead of arms and legs, seals have flippers, which act like paddles. The Antarctic seals hold their front flippers next to their bodies and move their back flippers from side to side. Because seals are mammals, they have to come to the surface to breathe. And we learned about that elephant seal, how he actually dives down um, and he can be underwater for two hours just by holding his breath. That's pretty amazing, I'd say. So as you know, the waters are probably pretty cold in Antarctica and the seals are, they're meant to be, so they can stay warm in the cold water with all that layer of blubber. So most seals are in Antarctica. There are some in the Arctic as well, but most seals in the world actually live um, in the Antarctic waters. They stay warm because they have that thick layer flat called blubber. Blubber. Blubber, blubber. kind of acts like a diver's, like a wetsuit, and it keeps the warm in and the cold out. It also helps seals swim smoothly underwater, and they're wonderful swimmers. They can actually dive as deep as 2,000 feet. These seals may stay out of the sea for weeks at a time. Some can hold their breath for over an hour. The Antarctic seals have a harder time on land, though. They have to crawl on their tummies. Remember how we talked about the seals? They kind of wiggle around on their tummies. Whereas the sea lions or those fur seals, they will actually kind of go with their flippers. Oh, seal pups. I always love the babies. Oh. Of course she loves the baby. She's a baby expert, by the way. Seals spend most of their time in the water. Nearly a year after its parents, the pup is born. The pup is born on ice, but as soon it learns how to swim. And we learned, I remember about the whale babies, we learned that the newborn whale actually has to go as fast up to the surface as it can once it's because born. Because it doesn't, it doesn't know how to like breathe properly. Right. So the first seal we're going to talk about that lives in Antarctica is the crab eater seal. Guess what the crab eater seal eats? Crab. That's a very good guess. But you know what? They don't eat crab. There are no, <laughs> there's no crab in the southern. It's too cold for a crab to live. So crab eaters actually eat mostly krill, just like the whales do. So that krill supplies food for a lot of the mammals that, and a lot of the other um, creatures too that live um, in Antarctica. So this is our first one we're going to write, the crab eater seal. So I'm going to spell it for you. So on your notes, on your... Um, Page, uh, your page number seven in your animal notebook, or if you're just using a blank sheet of paper. Just blank sheet of paper on the page seven. Yep, so you're going to make your, um, your uh, note for the crab eater seal. So I'm going to spell that for you. I don't have that one written backwards for you. Next week, I'll remember, I'll have all the animals written backwards for you to see, now that I know that that works. So the crab eater seal, crab eater is actually all one word. How do you spell? Um, well, let me do crab eater first. Crab eater is C R A B. That's crab. E A T E R. Mm -hmm. Crab. E A T E R. But that's all one word. Crab eater. Seals. Seal is S E A L S. S -E -A. Or you can just have a single yes. seal. And then if you're doing sentences, you can make a sentence. Or if you're just doing a fact, you can draw a little dash. I'll read to you about the crab eater seal, and you choose um, which fact you'd like to write. One thing I'll tell you right now is it is the most common seal in Antarctica, the crab eater seal. But they don't eat crabs either. That's a fun fact, too. They don't eat crabs. These, the crab eater seals mostly eat krill. Krill are those tiny little creatures that we saw that look like shrimp. There's huge numbers of krill that live in Antarctic's cold ocean waters. The crab eater seals have special rounded teeth that act like a sieve. Interesting, rounded teeth. The seal takes in a mouthful of krill and seawater and then pushes that water back out through their teeth, very much like the whales, right? In the spring, the crab eater seals form small little families. The families have a father, a mother, and one little pup. pup. The mommy takes care of the pup. 
and the father guards the family. Because one of the biggest predators of the crab eater seal is not only orca, the orca, the killer whale, that's one of them, but also the leopard seals. The leopard seals will actually eat the crab eater seals. Well, so they have a couple. <laughs> yeah, they have a couple predators. So then after crab eater seals, pick a fact. Alexis, what did you notice about the crab eater seals that stood out? They don't eat crab. Right, they don't eat crab. That's kind of a funny fact. So you can choose any of the facts. They're the most common Antarctic seal. Um, they are a true seal, which means that they don't have the ear flaps. They have a layer of blubber. Um, so all sorts of things. So you choose what you'd like to write for your crab eater seal fact. We're gonna learn about another little seal. This one you can see, just looking at it, it looks very different. This is the Ross seal. So Ross seal is spelled, just as it sounds, R-O-S-S, -S, Ross, and then seal, S-E-A-L, or you can write seals with an S, you can make it plural. So the hard to find Ross seal, there, there, are, um, there are not many Ross seals in Antarctica, and there's fewer Ross seals than any other kind of Antarctic seal. The raw seals actually mostly live alone, and they are hard to get to know. Unlike many other seals, the raw seals have no spots. You can see how smooth, I'm trying to make it so that, there we go, it doesn't have a glare on the page. So raw seals are very smooth skinned. Instead, they have streaks down the side. You can kind of see that a little bit. See how those lines by their neck? So they don't have spots like a lot of seals do, they have streaks. Sometimes the streaks even look like a mask. The raw seals are very deep divers. Like other seals, they close their nostrils before they dive. Raw seals have extra large eyes. You make your eyes extra large? So those raw seals, they got extra big eyes. <laughs> that helps them spot their prey in the dark waters. Their favorite food is? Krill. You would, I know. Choice. I was gonna guess krill, but actually their favorite food is squid. squid. They love to eat squid. The seals will chase the squid down and snap them up with their sharp teeth. The raw seals will also eat fish and? Yes, penguins. Krill. Well, they're, yeah, krill. They, they, they might eat those too. But. Yeah, so the raw seal, they'll also eat fish and krill. So we learned a few things about the raw seal. What's something that stood out to you, Alexis? Lines on the neck. Good. So she noticed they don't have spots. They more have streaks or lines on their neck. They're much smoother as well. Um, and there's a lot of other interesting facts too. They are um, one of the most unknown seals in Antarctica. There's the fewest amount of them. Um, they also have sharp teeth. Remember we learned about the crab eater seal, how they have the rounded teeth? Well, the raw seal has the sharp tooth and they are a true seal. So they have that layer of blubber. They have the ear holes and not the ear flaps. And there's our sweet little raw seal. So let's find another seal in Antarctica. And I've always really liked seals. I think this is the one that we have in our other story. This The seal named Patches book that we read. That's Patches. also a Weddell seal. seal and to me, of all of them, the Weddell seal seems the most cuddly. Not that you're really supposed to cuddle a wild animal, but for some reason they just seem very cuddly. So this one says loud Weddell seals. So I'm gonna spell Weddell for you. Because it's actually not spelled what I thought. It's spelled, spelled a little different. So Weddell is spelled W-E-D-D-E-L-L. -L. Weddell, W-E-D-D-E-L-L, -L. -L. seal, S-E-A-L, seal. Or if you make it plural, seals. So just write Weddell seals on your page, make your little dash, and let's listen to find out some fun facts about the Weddell seals. They spend much of their time swimming under the Antarctic's fast ice. Fast ice is sea ice that touches the land. Fast ice stays in one place and it does not float around as the sea ice sometimes does. The Weddell seals use their very long, strong teeth. So here's another kind of teeth. They have long, strong teeth to chew breathing holes in the ice. So because they're under the ice so much, they have to chew through the ice so they can get up to breathe because as you know, they can only hold their breath underwater. They still have to grab um, a glob of air. They may make different sounds to communicate or speak with each other. You can even hear their calls through the ice. So the Weddell seals are the loudest seals. 
They're very, very loud. Weddell seals eat mostly fish and squid. They can creep up very close to a fish and then they snap up the big chunks of fish without even chewing. So they don't tend to eat very much krill actually. They tend to eat more fish, but I'm sure they love, they eat krill as well. So the Weddell seals, a few facts we learned. We learned that they are the loudest seal. Um, they um, tend to go under the ice more than the other seals do. They're, um, they eat mostly fish. What did you write? What was your Weddell seal? The most cuddliest. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they do, they look, they definitely look like the most cuddliest of all of them. And in fact, the babies are, the, they look, they're real sweet and white. And if you want to hear more about the Weddell seals, we have another video about a seal named Patches that's on our Facebook page. It's a really cute, fun story. So there's our sweet little Weddell seal. They have small heads, light stomachs, and little spotted backs. The Weddells have the spots on them as well. Ooh, now this is the scary one. Or I should say the scariest of them all. And it has a different shaped um, mouth you'll see. This well, it's called the big scary leopard seals. That's what their title is called over here. So as you can see, look at how their their mouth is a little bit different than the others. The other seals are a little bit more smushed, like a pug or Himalayan cat. Oh, make it this not. Oh, it keeps shining. There we go. But the seal, uh, the leopard seal has a little bit more of a a curve to its mouth, and it's got really really sharp teeth because they are the most aggressive of all those seals. They're the only seal that actually will eat yeah. other yeah. seals. So can you guess how the leopard seal got their name? What do you think? Any guesses? Nope, their spotted coats yeah. look a little bit like a leopard coat. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to spell leopard for you. I can hear her spelling it over there. So let me spell leopard seals for you. Leopard is L-E-O-P-A-R-D. L E O P A R D and then seal S E A L or if you want to add an S to make it plural seals and then you just kind of listen in and pick a fact that you want to write in your notebook. Already have a fact. Ooh. Sharp teeth. Yeah, they do. They've got very sharp teeth. So they are a big, strong hunters. They are the most aggressive of all the seals. They have huge mouths, very strong jaws, and very sharp teeth which is very different from the crab eater seal, as we remember it had the, just the rounded teeth that only ate the krill. A leopard seal will almost eat almost anything smaller than itself. So any other seals it will eat, especially the crab eater seals, because they're so prevalent, um, penguins, fish, anything. One of the seal's favorite food is penguins. Leopard seals wait underwater near the edge of the ice for penguins to jump into the water. Then the seals catch them. Leopard seals will also swim up under seabirds resting on the water's surface and catch them. So some facts we learned about the leopard seal is they have a spotted coat like a leopard. They have strong jaws and large mouths. They are big, strong hunters. They're definitely more aggressive. They eat other seals. So there's a lot of different facts with our seal here. So Alexis, what, what um, fact did you notice most? Leopard seals, very sharp teeth. Mm -hmm, very sharp teeth, very good. Yeah, so they are definitely the most aggressive. But as you know, who hunts the seals? Orcas. That's right, the orcas are the killer whales. They will um, hunt the seals. The best way for a seal to stay safe from the killer whale is to swim away as fast as it can. They, they, they really have no way to defend themselves against them, against the um, killer whales. Besides their teeth. <laughs> right. So there we learned a little bit about all the different seals of Antarctica. And now, and, we, and Alexis shared her facts about the blue whale. So now we're ready to do some drawing. So I'm going to switch over the camera and we're going to draw some of the different creatures. All right, so here we have, Alexis has her animal notebook. So she's got her Antarctic mammals and her facts. Then on the white side, she's going to be drawing her pictures. Since I'm just using a notebook, I haven't gotten my facts down yet because I've been doing all the reading. <laughs> so. Largest, the blue oh, whale. It's like, oh, Mackenzie got knocked off for a little, but I'm sorry, Mackenzie. Well, we kind of did a little bit review on the, um, on the seals. I'm not sure which part you missed, um, but right now we're actually ready to um, do our drawing. We're going to draw some of these Antarctic creatures. The blue whale is the largest M. Yep, see, that's all I got written so far. <laughs> this is the blue whale is the largest M. <laughs> so let me see if I can get this 
set up a little bit. I'm still kind of, I'm still new at trying to figure out how to get these the tripod working right. And, we got a new one now. Yep. So I'm still, I'm still working on my technology skills. So I've got my plain white one. Alexis has her animal notebook, but you're going to be drawing on this side. So let's, since the biggest one is the blue whale, let's start with the, the blue, blue whale. whale. So what I do when I'm drawing a creature is I just like to look at the shape of it. Instead of trying to look at all the little details, let's just look at the shape. We can almost see it kind of looks like a banana. Banana. So I'm going to put my blue whale down here at the bottom. We're going to make it. We're gonna just gonna draw a nice big banana, and because the whales are so big, oh here, do you need me to scooch over a little Sorry. bit? All right, I gotta scooch over. Our table isn't overly big here. Definitely not overly big for a family of three. <laughs> so, and I gotta get this up a little bit more now. All right, so now we're gonna draw our big banana blue whale. So let's do that. Oops, let me move this book up a little bit. So since the blue whale is so big, I'm almost going to put it at a little bit of an angle here. So we're going to kind of just do a rounded shape down here. And then as it goes on, it gets a little bit skinnier. And then those whales have that distinctive tail that looks a lot like a mermaid tail. It reminds me of a mermaid tail. So my whale tail is going to actually go off the page a little bit. If you can fit yours on the page, that's great too. It looks like Alexis is actually able to fit hers on the page. Mine's kind of going off. So again, it starts off bigger here and it gets a little bit more narrow and more narrow as it, it gets like to it's, the tail. It looks like it's going to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's a pretty good whale, actually. Oh, it looks like all her yeah, Mackenzie's internet's not working very no, good. Man. Oh, I'm sorry, Mackenzie. Well, hopefully, maybe if you can rewatch it, maybe it'll help. Um, be, we'll be able to see it a little better. So the male hat or the whale has a fairly large mouth. So we're gonna draw a long line, and it kind of goes down a little bit here, and it has those baleen in its mouth that is kind of like the bristles, which we actually we're not gonna see because my my whale has a closed mouth. So if you want to draw your whale with an open mouth and little krills, <laughs> oh. It's actually really cute. Yours is cute. And then it just has a little tiny eye, like by the edge of its mouth here. Just a little tiny eye. And I'm going to give my little whale some eyelashes. It has its fin here. And then I am going to draw its blowhole. It has kind of like two little sections for its blowhole. Because that's a huge part of the whale is being able to breathe underwater with that um, or hold its breath underwater with that blowhole. So here's our whale. The blue whale took up most of our page, but we still have Especially room for some mine. seals. Look at mine. Oh, yeah. So I'm actually going to draw an Antarctic ice edge up here. So here I'm going to draw the edge of the ice here, kind of at the top here. I'm going to draw one seal on the ice. I'm going to draw a thick And one too. seal swimming. And actually, if you want to, you could even do a, you could even draw a, um, an orca too, the killer whale. Those are beautiful creatures I think too. I only have room for the creatures being I know. I think because our, the blue whale is so big, we probably only have room for about two different seals. So again, I like to look at a seal and look at the shape of it. So I'm going to use this sweet little Weddell seal here. They look so soft and sweet. Oh, we could have written a fact about the elephant seal too. Well... No room for it. I know. See, we're running out of room again. So here's our sweet little seal. So cute. So you can see it's a very rounded shape here. So we're going to kind of draw. Let me move up here a little bit. I'm going to start his head kind of up here, this little rounded head. And a very rounded body. And his little flippers here. And I'll erase that little line there. <laughs> And there's this front up here. So yeah, the Weddell seal especially has that rounded face, just like like a little pug. It kind of reminds me of a pug or of a Himalayan cat. It has a very little, and then we'll do the leopard seal in the water because it's got that distinct um, jaw. Mm -hmm. So here's the front flippers of the sweet little Weddell seal. And let me see. Oh, here's my eraser. I'm gonna erase this little line so because it's gonna, gonna be kind of be going over the ice a little bit there and then the Weddell seals and most seals do have um, spots on them so you can draw a couple little spots on your seals making our sweet little Weddell seal and do you remember which one was it they had the stripes do you remember uh, which one had more of the stripes let's see it 
was the raw seals. Mm -hmm. So the raw seals are ones without spots, whereas most of the others do have the spots. The raw seals are more solid color. So there we're going to make its two sweet little eyes. And I want to make sure I get it. I'm going to use this one for this picture here to kind of look at its face a little bit better. So it's got two sweet eyes here. Look at those sweet eyes. Kind of like a, almost like a curve here. It kind of looks like a hill for its mouth. So I'm going to make kind of like a little hill. So I can copy that kind of down here. Draw its little nose up here. And then it has a lot of... Um, whiskers. So I'm going to draw some dots for its whiskers and draw its whiskers coming out and some cute little fur in its little mouth there. Oh, sweet little Weddell seal. So there's our Weddell seal and I'm going to do the leopard seal in the water. So that's the one that likes to, um, and we might, maybe we can, we can draw a little orca coming out the bottom maybe. So here we have our leopard seal it's that we're going to draw. We can't do any penguins. Well, penguins are birds, so we're like we're focusing on just the mammals of Antarctica. So when we get back to the birds, we'll be doing um, the birds of Antarctica, which there's a Bad lot. Seals. There's way more birds than there are mammals. Yep. So look at the shape on this face. It's like a letter U, isn't it? Or almost reminds me of like a alligator, with how rounded that jaw and how oh long. God. But it's so different. What a different look it is than this um, sweet little Weddell seal. So here's the leopard, leopard seal. seal. We're going to draw the leopard seal actually swimming in the water with the whale. Now, the leopard seal will not eat our blue whale, so we are okay with that. So we're going to draw his rounded jaw there. There's body's going to kind of go back there with his um, flippers. And his flipper up here. So he can swim and they are very good swimmers but the crab eaters are actually faster swimmers so that's one advantage they have is that it looks like i made his head just a wee bit too small so i'm going to make this just a little bit bigger by going around it again and then erasing it because i accidentally made his head a little bit too big and that's the advantage of drawing with a pencil too sometimes it's fun to draw with a pen but when you're drawing things for the first time it is good to use a pencil to practice. So there's our, um, his, this, his jaw there. And his nostrils are a little bit more pronounced here. Almost, again, he looks so much like an alligator. The more I'm looking at him, the more I'm realizing, realizing how much he looks like alligators. There's his eyes. And we are going to give him just some little spots and little marks on his back. Because they do have um, the leopard kind of spots. And e each one has different spots on them as well which is a neat thing. And the leopard seals, they can swim so fast, they can actually swim 25 miles an hour. Isn't that crazy? So here we have... Just like the speed limit of our downtown. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you know what? Should we try to put a little orca pop in over here? Let's do a sweet little orca. And that's Although they are, the they are killer whales, but I, I always remember them as SeaWorld. <laughs> So I'm curious of all our Antarctic animals that we learned about today, um, what were some of the favorites of people? I would like to hear some of your favorite Antarctic mammals, and then I'll go over our project too. Again, let's go ahead and draw just a little one popping up here. So he's kind of got a little bit of that rounded snout there. Goes up and out, and there we'll draw his dorsal fin there. Oh, the orca, yup. That is a, that's a, a, a nice one too. And I do, I always, we used to go to SeaWorld a lot when it used to be in Ohio. I used to go to SeaWorld a lot when I was younger. And it was always fun watching Shamu and Mamu and Namu. So I'm gonna draw this one with this, the orca with its mouth open. And I'm gonna draw these, the teeth it has. So yeah, I'm gonna draw all these little teeth that the orca has for eating. needle teeth. Yep, and then it has like um, this bottom, the bottom it jaw is fish. white, and then it has like a white, and there's actually a dolphin. Um, let me see what the name of that dolphin was that lives in Antarctica. There's a dolphin that lives in Antarctica as well called the hourglass dolphin. And the reason why I'm mentioning it is because it reminds me a lot of the coloring 
of the um, of the orca, where it's got the black and the white, and it's the only dolphin that actually lives in the Antarctic waters. So I'm going to kind of just shade this to so you can see the the dark and the light. You can kind of see just a little dorsal fin kind of popping out there. So there we have our Antarctic creatures here. We've got our little sweet Weddell seal. We have the leopard seal. We have our blue whale and we have our orca. And while filling my facts, Alexis has her facts. And let me, oh, let me, while we have it this, this way, I just want to show everybody. So on page number five in your animal notebook from Abeka in the third grade curriculum, um, you'll have a page that says my mammal report, page number five. You're going to have homework to do. First time for homework. What do you think about that? It'll be kind of fun to see like what other people have to say see about it. So all you have to do for your homework is you have to figure out your the mammal re, what you want to make your mammal report on. It doesn't have to be a favorite mammal. It could be just a mammal that you'd like to learn a little bit more about. And you have to you'll have to come back with some information. I want to know what mammal you chose, where it lives, as far as like what continent, what country, and its habitat. Three things. So Alexis, do you have an idea of what you want to do yet? Or are you going to still think about it? How about... What do you think? You don't have to have it now if you, don't, if you can't think of anything. Red panda. Oh, a red panda. So let's think about the red panda. Where does it live? We learned about it last week. In China. Mm -hmm. The red panda lives in the Himalayan mountains, doesn't it? So I think it actually spreads more than China. Um, but it lives near the Himalayan mountains in Asia, right? So it is an alpine creature. So those are the things that you're going to need to um, gather up this week and tell me next week all about that. And maybe even get some books from the library about your about your favorite mammal. Or not necessarily your favorite mammal. I keep saying favorite. But actually, it can be any, any mammal you want to learn more about. So does anybody have any they'd like to share with us today? Or do you want to wait till next week to share? And I'll also do another post kind of um, in giving instructions on our mammal report and what we're going to do with it. And at the end, we have a little fun little twist we're going to do. <laughs> we're actually going to put together a little video of everybody's mammal report. And it doesn't have to be long. You know, we're, we're trying to simplify things as much as we can. So you just put, you get to gather up the information that you'd like. And on the white page, I'd like you to try to draw it, but you are actually welcome to, if you wanted to print out a picture or maybe one that you can color something like that, that would be um, good as well. So your only homework is to figure out your mammal, figure out where it lives, both the continent and the country. Why you like it? Well, you don't even tell me that yet. Just where it lives oh, and the, the habitat. Is digging. I know she's. I know the doggy's getting kind of cold. She thinks she's in Antarctica. Well, everyone, we just want to thank you for watching with us and for sharing the Antarctic animals. We've always, we, every time we learn about Antarctica, Alexis and I always say we'd love to go visit there. Mm -hmm. It would just be so much fun to see and the ice and the beauty and how different. And in fact, there are 30,000 visitors to Antarctica every summer. Like but only nobody visit. really lives there. Yeah, except for the scientists. There's about like 150 scientists that will live there in the winter. Oh, the blue whales. Beth loves the blue whales. That was one of the, the favorites we learned too today, that they're the largest mammal, the loudest mammal, and that they cover almost all the oceans, just not the Arctic Ocean. That's the only ocean. Yep. Oh, Mackenzie has a question. Yes, go ahead, Mackenzie. What's your question? And next week, we're not going to tell you what we're doing next week. Oh, for Alexis, a question for Alexis even. As you can see, she's got her t-shirt on that that says that she's, it has no cavities. Our, our, <laughs> our um, local dentist, they actually will um, give the kids a special t-shirt and they go get, they're part of the no cavity club. No. Isn't that cool? Uh, until I'm like 18, I'm just kidding. Yep. And there's so many mammals. Um, I can't remember the exact amount, but there's just a vast amount of mammals that live on the continent. Oh, have you been to any of the continents? Hmm. Besides North America. Yeah, really, basically North. We, we like to travel a lot through videos and books, so we've actually been traveling around the world. Well, we have actually been to Alaska. Yes, we we did. We went to Alaska last the plane year. The ride was really boring, but 
<clears throat> yeah, she didn't do well on the plane. But yeah, so she, she we've been to Alaska. Um, but yeah, only in North, we, she's only traveled North America. Um, I've been down to South America just a little bit, but... You have? But that's really Have you been it. to Mexico? She's been to Hawaii, well, by the way. Well, Mexico is part of North America. She's been to Hawaii. But yeah, so um, any of the states. So let's see. What state? Let's see if you remember all the states you've been to. Do you remember? I've been to... Mm -hmm. And Ludington. Well, yep, that's in Michigan. So we we do a lot of traveling around the Great Lakes. We're in Michigan, so we love to go all around Michigan, around the Great Lakes. It's so pretty. So Mackenzie's been to Arizona. Wow. Yeah. So we have not been anywhere out west really. So we've been to Ohio, where you where you live, um, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, she's been over to New York, but she was so little she probably doesn't remember. Whoa. Yep. Oh, and in Florida yeah, and true. Indiana. Good. Yeah. So you've kind of been all over the place too. Yeah. So we've kind of stayed more on the um, the east side of the United States. We haven't really gone out west very much, except for Alaska. We did that last year. But, but I want to go again. Just maybe not with the plane. Right. But we we do. We like to do a lot of. Um, a kind of adventures through we do um, YouTube videos and DVDs and documentaries and books that kind of share a lot of different places around the world and recently we did um, a big study on India which was very interesting and we've done um, different some of the European countries and things so it's fun oh and she's been to North Carolina too so some North of the same places Carolina, South Carolina. Carolina. I know that's what we're she's doing all the states you're probably doing all the states in the Abecas right in your little map book right now mm -hmm. that's what she's been doing now right mm -hmm. well we'll be excited to hear about the different mammals that people choose for the reports and we will see you next wednesday bye, bye everybody